Hey y'all, thank you so much for watching Miss Angel Luke TV where we talk about everything and when I mean everything, I mean like. Um, really don't know what I'm going to title this. Uh, I think I do, but I don't really know. But pretty much, bitch, I got the Z. I got the Z, that's all I'm going to say. If, if you can see by the title or if you can tell by the title, I got some tea for you, okay? But before we get into the video, I want y'all to go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. That way we can stay in tune and, you know, keep up with the family and keep up with these videos, y'all. And also turn on your post notifications, just in case you haven't done so already. Uh, I just want to say, y'all, like, I did decide to email my mom, like, a couple days ago. This was at... I, I don't remember what day it was. It probably was like Tuesday or Wednesday, something like that. Um, I've been having this email, this particular email that I'm going to read to y'all. Um, but I didn't read it or open it yet because I just wanted to read it with y'all. Um, I did want to open up some updated packages that my mom had sent me. So like right after I posted that video, she sent me something else. Uh, but I think I know what these are. She, I think she said that she was sending my son some socks or something oh and before i get into this as well i can't forget um a lot of y'all said that y'all would love to write to my mama and i'm like super super stoked that y'all would really really like to write and one of my subscribers came up with something she was like saying she, i forgot what she said um do it online or email something like that but whatever it was it was pertaining to online that way nobody gotta worry about no post stamps and post stamps what the fuck what she called things stamps yeah <laughs> y'all don't have to worry about no stamps or anything like that and mailing things so what i did is i created an e-card which i'm gonna put in the description box below so that everybody with the link could go to it and write something all you gotta do is click next add a page you know um add your name or whatever uh, or not necessarily you don't have to put your name but whatever you're gonna write and then save it and pretty much that'll be accessible to her or she'll be able to look at it whenever she comes out so we don't have to worry about mailing anything in so don't do it right now do it after the video of course but whenever y'all done with the video don't forget to hit the link down below that way you can add some encouraging words just to you know help her along the way y'all have any tips resources that y'all want to give her um, like as far as like any programs or whatever put it in there like anything y'all could think of that would help her along the way Please I encourage you to put it there. I decided to do a little giveaway So anybody who actually writes in the card, I would say put your name Yeah, just put your nickname that way I can kind of keep track because I decided that whoever actually put a little encouraging word or whatever sentences in that in the car for her that I'll enter y'all into a giveaway because I don't I don't really do giveaways here um, I did a giveaway in my business so I'm gonna do a giveaway here now so um yeah I just want to give back to y'all by just returning the favor if you guys actually do decide to do that so because y'all really don't have to do it but the fact that y'all actually want to do it really means a lot to me as to what i'm gonna give away i don't know yet more than likely something for my business and also a gift card whatever you want for my business like if you into makeup that is you can choose whatever you want and also i'll be adding an additional gift card to that as well so of your choice by the way so if you do that you'll be entered into the giveaway i'm gonna just open this real quick Cause they be taping the fuck out this shit. Five hours later. My mom said she had somebody crochet some socks for the kids. So this looks like this might be for baby G. So this is cute and um, creative. Probably for CNT. These are probably for Nevaeh. These are pretty cute. <laughs> These are probably for Junior. That's super cute. That was it though. The main reason y'all came to this video is because of the tea. So we just gonna go ahead and get right into it. My mom has the capability at the prison that she's in, they have the capability of emailing. So I have a lot of emails and I, I realized this like um, a couple days after I posted a video and I was asking you guys for your opinion as to how I should um, tell y'all the videos or, or as to how I should read y'all the letters. Uh, piece by piece so um, I realized I had tons of emails as well because we've been emailing ever since like the beginning of the year really at this point since she's been in the new jail because she was transferred from one jail to the other after some time and so now where she is right now she's actually at a prison like a women's prison oh grandmother ch catch her Charlie horse she's actually at a women's prison right now so um, they have a lot of like freedom and capability they we can video chat girl um, we can send videos, 
send pictures through the email so you don't have to worry about mailing because I hate mailing shit like it, I hate mailing so um this past week I was at work and it was really really slow and I'm just like hmm let me go ahead and email her because she had emailed me earlier that week or um last week or something like that so I have forgot to email her back so I'm just like let me just go ahead and email her and I normally don't really say too much in my emails but I just was like hmm let me just email her because I usually be like really really straight to the point like either I'm saying like oh hey I'm gonna call you or I'm not hey I'm gonna call you but either either I'm saying hey I got money on the phone or I'm just sending pictures because I really like I don't know I just I don't know I don't be know what to talk about sometimes but today I had or that day I had a lot to talk about I really wasn't saying much just just encouraging her just telling her that um, I hope everything goes well this time and that we're gonna help her get on her feet and this and that and just letting her know that I'm really really proud of her progression because like I really have noticed her progression and by the way y'all an update I felt so much better as far as speaking with my mom now like I don't know just it's so weird like ever since that video like I, I really prayed about it because I, I hated the fact that me dreading the fact that my mom was coming home but now I'm kind of excited now like over the past couple of days I've noticed um, my excitement has has increased and I noticed whenever she call like I be we be talking on the phone and I be willingly wanting to put money on the phone now because before I'd be like oh I don't want to put the money on the phone like I don't know, it just, it just was something about me putting money on the jail phone that I just wasn't really getting jiggy with. But now I'm just like, now I'm like eager to talk to her because it's like we kind of have a little bit more to talk about because now we're talking about what we're going to do or, or what she's going to do whenever she get out here and stuff like that. So she's been really, really good, like talking, level-headed, like she's been sounding really, really nice. I just hope and pray that it stays the same whenever she gets out because y'all know how people be whenever they, they be in jail. They could say anything, you know what I'm saying? Because they in jail. Like, what else they fucking supposed to say? But it could be a different story whenever they get out. So I'm just praying and hoping that this is not the case. My mom is praying and hoping that as long as she stay on her medication, that we ain't gonna have no problems, you know what I'm saying? So, that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. I'm gonna just screenshot the message so y'all can see it on the side with me as well. I'm reading by email and not by handwriting is a lot better because y'all know I told y'all how handwriting is in cursive and child it was so hard last video so I'm just like yeah I'm gonna just go ahead and start reading them the emails at this point because yeah it's just much better so let's go ahead and get into it the email that that I'm reading to y'all she is replying to me asking her um, what happened with her and the secret lesbian relationship or whatever that she had for 10 years that no one knew about well kind of knew about but she never admitted until I was 21 so um, I asked her about it because I've always been curious about how it happened like how did y'all end up being together how did you end up being a lesbian for 10 years like my mom was a church woman like she had me in church I grew up in church y'all I was in a choir my mom was in a choir like I was a church girl like I don't think I've ever really like talked about this, but whenever I was in New Orleans before Hurricane Katrina before we moved to Houston always in church Bible study every Wednesday always going to choir with her so my mama every Tuesday church every Sunday morning service and a night service like I was even on the fucking cheerleader team for the church at one point um, even on the dance team at one point even on the step team at one point for the church like girl I, I was I was in there like you would I was I was in the church you know what I'm saying but then a bitch moved to Houston okay and that's just all she wrote so my mom says hey baby girl I don't mind sharing how huh I'm gonna blur out her name <laughs> I don't mind sharing how Rough Rider and I got together it actually started because of a text message between Philip and George I'm gonna say these people names because y'all don't know who the fuck they is and it don't matter um, but she said it actually all and by the way these are Philip is somebody he's no longer living but he, he was the leader of the choir that my mom and Rough Rider within because Rough Rider was in a choir too <laughs> she was she was the alto my mom was soprano that should tell you something right then in the air but um <laughs> anyways and George is another choir member um or he was like the choir leader or whatever like on a praise team some shit like that but Philip he was the director of the whole choir so anyways she said Philip used Rough Rider's phone to text him no wait 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 wait, wait. She said, I'm, let me back up. She said, it all started between, it all started because of a text message between Philip and George. Philip used Rough Rider's phone to text him but forgot to erase it. He said, good morning, baby. And it was just a joke between she and I. But things turned between the two of us because we started looking at each other in a sexual way. 
We started being physical one day when I was on my way to Delgado to school. We stopped at a Burger King and got physical in the bathroom, shaking my head. Well, my this is my first time reading this. Cause I'm, I'm, this is new to me, like new to y'all, okay? Got freak in the bathroom, okay, at Burger King, okay. Burger King, Burger King, all right. She was possessive towards me and controlling, she was. I'm sure you remember how controlling she was towards me. I do. I broke it off with her long before she left the house because I couldn't take her anymore. And what she's mentioning is um, like whenever Rough Riding was living with us, like she was living with us for years, but she's saying that she like broke up with her way before she actually moved out the house um, because she just couldn't take it anymore supposedly. So then she says, it was more like a blessing that you gave me the ultimatum when you told me you were pregnant with Nabea because, and I'm sorry if I keep stopping but i have to like talk about this in the, in the middle of it so y'all can understand what she's talking about um but whenever i got pregnant with my daughter at 15 um rough rider was still living with us and whenever i got pregnant i'm just like okay bet this is the per perfect time for me to like kind of push her out the picture because i ain't even fucking like her anyway um and i'm just like i need my mama like attention all here especially like i'm pregnant now like i don't need half of her attention like i don't need none of that she need to be out the way so i basically told her like it's either me or her and um yeah i was 15 and like who the fuck you talking to this type of shit like yeah i, I ain't like tell her like that type of sh that that type of way in a disrespectful way but i was just like mama like i really don't like being here if you're gonna be with her like i'm just gonna go to louisiana with my grandma and that's what i did because like she didn't of course kick her out that same day um, but I ended up going with my grandma for the summer for a couple of months while I was pregnant. Um, I, I told my mom I was pregnant at three months. So by this time, I'm, it's summertime. I'm like going to my doctor's appointment and all of that in Louisiana for the first time because, um, that's when I first was able to tell my family that I was pregnant. So that I was finally able to get treated. So yeah, basically she ended up leaving. Uh, when, by the time I came back to Houston, Rough Rider was gone. She was planning on going back to Vashery the following week, but I made her in Vashery is where Rough Rider is from, Vashery, Louisiana. Um, she was planning on going back to Vashery the following week, but I made her leave right then and there. You are more important to me than her, and I wanted to work on our relationship. Does this make any sense? You were nine back then, and you wouldn't have put two and two together then. She would stay in my room because she was scared to sleep by herself. Bullshit. <laughs> she is the devil herself, and she got mad because I told her sister she and I were in a relationship. Before I continue, whenever Rough Rider was staying with us or living with us, the first apartment that she moved into with us, it was a three bedroom apartment in New Orleans. Um, it was two bedrooms upstairs, one bedroom downstairs. I had the bedroom downstairs. Why, I don't know. Well, now I know, bitch, it makes sense. But um, Rough Rider and my mom had their room upstairs. So they had a whole upstairs, entire upstairs by the to herself because I had a bathroom downstairs so I had no really really reason to come upstairs but she would always stay in my mama's room like this would happen at this apartment this would happen at the Houston apartment eventually like she even though she had her own room she would always be in my mama's room and her excuse was that she was scared to be in a room by herself because or just what my mama would tell me that her excuse was she said that she was scared to be in a room by herself because whenever she was a young girl someone broke into her window while she was asleep and that traumatized her. Mind y'all, at this point she's 32, 33, 34, 35. Like she's, you know, she's been with us for a while. Like you're a grown ass woman, you're in your 30s and you're still scared to sleep in a room by yourself because of something that happened as a child like that. Like they just broke into your, your window. Like they didn't kill you or hurt you or anything like that. They just broke into your window. You're, you're just, you just can't sleep in a room by yourself okay anyways but mama ended up telling her sister that they was in a relationship like long long down the line which is what she's mentioning in this email now so she's saying that she stopped talking to her because my mama told rough rider's sister that they was in a relationship and rough rider didn't want anybody to know that she was gay she didn't want anybody to know that she was a church going woman that liked women <laughs> That's why she stopped talking to me because she made me promise her that I would take our secret to the grave. <laughs> but I let the cat out of the bag, so to speak. I'm glad we're not friends anymore. With her, I didn't need any enemies, you know what I mean? I hope that answered your questions. Let me know if you still have any more. And then she started talking about other stuff. I'll mention this part. She says, 
just like you'll always be my baby girl no matter how old you get my mom says the same thing about me i just want us all to be close again and my life will be complete again you and my babies are my world which is there she talking about my, my um kids along with my mom sister and my cousin without family i am nothing i love you all so much i've changed for the better i'll show you all better than i can tell you I have a lot of making up to do with you and my mom and I'll spend the rest of my life showing you all how much I love and appreciate you all. It has taken this two years of me being locked up to bring out the change in me. Some people don't have family like this lady like this lady named Jackie that I work with in the kitchen. My mom has a job in the kitchen at jail that she goes to like on certain days like five days of the week. Like it'd be like a real ass job but just, you just don't get paid. Just something to do. But um, she said she's been down almost seven years and she can't get in touch with her father and her children. She doesn't know she doesn't know where she's going to go when she's released. As a matter of fact, she has a detainer in Texas when she's released from here. There are so many women that don't have support from their family and I'm very and I am so very blessed to have my family's support. God has been so good to me and I don't take his goodness for granted. Thank you so much for allowing me back in your life. I will always be thankful to you for that because it could have turned out so differently. I have so much to tell you and it's too much to type. I have so much to tell my mama too and I have, and I'll have a chance to talk to you both. Please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. Keep praying for me because I'm learning things on a daily basis about myself. As long as I take meds and pray really hard, I'll be just fine. I thought she was gonna say a little bit more, but she didn't. But I mean, pretty much y'all get the gist of it. Um, she said, one day they got sexual as Burger King in the bathroom. <laughs> That's pretty much it. That's the way to start a fling i guess growing up like i would always wonder why my mom used to treat her so differently I'm like i don't I understand y'all best friends supposedly or whatever but like y'all a little bit too like you you buying her things like you doing this for her you doing that for her i can vividly remember one time this is whenever we were still living in, in new orleans i was nine at this time i remember one time this specific time where mom had cooked spaghetti and it was leftover spaghetti so like at this point it was the next day after she had already cooked it but we had came home from church or something like that and mom was making plates like you know to warm up and eat for dinner and stuff so i guess they didn't have enough for a third plate because my, my mom will always make her plate by the way just to throw that out there um but i guess they didn't have enough for the third plate which would have been my mom's plate or no actually i think the third plate was going to be for a rough rider but because it wasn't enough my mom ended up literally giving her her entire plate like i remember her telling her oh well, you can eat mine and i was just thought to myself like why the fuck would you give a grown-ass woman like i understand like that's your friend or whatever but like you ain't say like we could split it or whatever you literally like say you can have my plate like i mean i could always maybe she wasn't hungry that day i don't know she had to have been hungry because she was making her plate so I don't know I just remember that I'm never gonna forget that cuz I that's the first time that I really started to wonder like why is my mama really treating this bitch so so different weird to be able to like ask my mom certain things cuz like I'm grown now so I can pretty much ask her anything without her feeling offended like my mom is a pretty much open book if y'all have any questions that y'all want me to ask my mom like ask me in the comment section like i don't know how i'm gonna approach her with the questions but i can always ask her in a regular way that's gonna be the wrap of this video after this we're gonna start getting into like other story times um other things in my life that has happened it y'all i'm glad that we are here uh, i'm super super tired if y'all made it to the end of this video girl i'm so tired i deal with ovarian cysts like a motherfucker and like every single time around my ovulation day i always feel like crap and like my stomach is really cramping so i'm about to lay down because I really don't feel good. Thank y'all so much for watching. Let me know what y'all thought in the comment section. Have y'all ever been through a situation like that? Like, have y'all parents ever hid a same-sex relationship from you? <laughs> and if so, how do y'all feel about it? Or how did that go? So, let me know. In the description box below, do not forget to sign that card for my mom. Like I said, we're gonna be... I'm gonna put all y'all in a giveaway. So, if y'all sign the card, message me. Showing me that y'all signed the card. That way I can know who signed it. So yeah that's what i'm gonna do sign the card after y'all sign it message me on instagram or on snapchat whatever is easier for y'all and let me know that way i can add y'all to the giveaway list and we can win some free shit okay so thank y'all so much for y'all support and i'll see y'all next week bye